Our story begins in the city of Quitman in Brooks County, Georgia. It's just a traditional small town and, and probably everything you would want to see. It's kind of a Norman Rockwell painting in, in real life. Growing up in Quitman, I always believed in my heart that everybody got along. Brooks County gets its name from South Carolina Congressman Preston Brooks, who infamously beat Senator Charles Sumner of Massachusetts within an inch of his life on the floor of the Senate in 1856 for his criticism of slavery. A plaque standing in the town square of Quitman describes Preston Brooks only as a zealous defender of states' rights. And it was here, on December 21, 2010, that 10 people were arrested in connection with alleged voter fraud in a county school board election. In the four-year investigation that followed, they were portrayed as criminals in local and national media. But not one of them was found guilty of a crime. Back in 2004, Nancy Dennard was working as a special ed teacher in Quitman. I saw so many things and so many injustices that I became alarmed, became concerned that maybe I could be more benefit if I was out making some of the decisions as opposed to having to enforce them in the, at the school level. At that time, five of the seven seats on the Brooks County Board of Education were filled by white members, while a majority of students were black. The only way I thought at the time was to do something about it was to become a member of the governing board. I ran in 2004 at large and I lost. I ran in 2006 and I lost, so I ran again. Dennard finally won a seat on the Brooks County Board of Education in a runoff election in 2009, relying heavily on absentee ballots. The following year, she recruited two more African-American educators in an effort to flip the white majority. In the beginning, Nancy was talking about when she ran in 2009, she used absentee. And I said, well, Nancy, you know me, you gotta show it to me. After a careful study of the laws governing the use of absentee ballots, they devised a plan to educate voters who may not have otherwise been active in a local election. I said, you know what, that's the best thing, because I know when I started voting, I would go to the machine and I would be kind of fearful, because I didn't want nobody to know that I didn't know how to do the machines. We may be a rural county, but we have pride too. By doing the absentee ballot, that fear is gone. Thomas's sister, Lula Smart, volunteered to help with the absentee campaign. We went out door to door asking people whether they were registered voters, and if they wasn't, we would register them to vote because we had the forms on hand, and so we just asked them to, you know, fill out their information, and those that couldn't write or read, we would fill it out for them, and we'll turn it back into the registrar office. And I always try to target to like the elderly people and the um, young people, because we got a lot of elderly people that can't get out and vote, and a lot of young people that don't vote. Diane Thomas and Linda Troutman handily won the Democratic nomination in the July primary. That meant if both of us got on the board, then they would have a majority black board. And there were a lot of uh, head honchos in Brooks County who didn't favor that too much because their thing was over their dead bodies. Their primary opponents launched writing campaigns endorsed by Larry Cunningham, a well-known member of the school board who also raised suspicions of voter fraud to the district attorney. There were, you know, allegedly, you know, bundles of ballots being taken to the post office at one time. I've seen an absentee ballot and I've seen it says that you don't get any help with it unless you're uh, uh, illiterate or blind. Surely everybody in Brooks County is not blind and or, and or illiterate, not, not in these bundled amounts. I asked the uh, district attorney to look at it and gave him what little bit of hard evidence I had, which was fingernail thin, but it was, it was, it was I could at least allege that I had seen evidence of a, of a crime. In response, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, under the guidance of Secretary of State Brian Kemp, sent a task force to look into the matter. We knew shortly after the, the primary that they were out and they were they were intimidating people and GBI were out and it was like 30 of them at a time in our, in our county interviewing people and, and trying to gather data. You know, that's fine, that, that's the process. If, if they feel they need to do it, do it. But right now, I was not gonna let that cloud my vision or my drive to do what I needed to do. My thing, and it goes back to my belief, you know, I had done nothing wrong. I was like, mm. These people do not want a black majority board. 
I had just as much right to become a board member as they did, and nobody was gonna take that from me. Nobody. Even with the investigation and writing campaigns, Troutman and Thomas won in the general election. For the first time in history, the school board had more black members than white. About 40 days after the election of 2010, I was arrested. And they knocked on the door and they said, uh, we have a warrant for your arrest. And I said, my arrest? Why? He said, for voter fraud. On December 21st, 2010, 10 people were arrested in connection with alleged voter fraud. This group would become known as the Quitman 10. Well, now to the Fox News voter fraud unit. More arrests of officials in another absentee ballot scandal, this time in Georgia. Over the next four years, the Quitman 10, plus two arrested later, faced public scrutiny of the highest degree. It was uh, sensationalism. They needed to be able to show the public that we, had, that we were criminals. For newly minted Secretary of State Brian Kemp, a guilty verdict in a voter fraud case would be a massive victory among his Republican base. And while some members of the community stood behind the Quitman 10 plus 2, prosecutors offered a deal. If Dennard pled guilty to one charge of theft by taking, the rest would walk free. They thought if they could make an example out of me and that would kill the spirit of this movement. And, and, and we collectively agreed, nobody's pleading out because we've done nothing. We're standing together. If you're a chicken, you can't hang with me because you can't fly. In the end, only one of the Quitman 10 plus 2 went to trial, Lula Smart. I had like, what, 38, 39 counts on me. My life was on the line, you know, I could go to prison, leave my family behind. I knew nothing about prison life. I knew nothing about jail. I've never been inside a jailhouse. If found guilty, Smart faced spending the rest of her life in prison. Jail time of any any magnitude, and this is just my opinion now, for what it's worth, it's not much. It's uh, I thought it was overkill. I was actually thinking about killing myself because with all the indictment that I had, in my mind, I, I thought, well, if I just commit suicide, this will be over. I mean, it was like, it was devastating. It was actually devastating to me. I was worried about my sister. To see her have to go through all of that, all because I wanted to be on the board, not her, me. Uh, that, that was devastating. In the end, however, Smart was acquitted of all charges. After a four-year investigation, none of the Quitman 10 plus 2 were found guilty of any wrongdoing. But a message was sent. So they were trying to send a message to the black community. If y'all keep continuing to do this right here, this is what's going to happen to you guys. Same thing that happened to them. Today, the Quitman 10 plus 2 have moved on. Diane Thomas sits on the school board. Lula Smart now has a seat on the Quitman City Council. And Nancy Dennard is mayor. But that doesn't mean they've forgotten how things got so out of control. I think that I'm owed an apology from Brian Kemp, first of all, because he could have stopped this. We never should have uh, been indicted. And after discovery, when the information came in and it just didn't add up, I think he had an obligation at that point to step in and stop it. But Kemp didn't stop it at the time. And when Stacey Abrams ran against Kemp for governor in 2018, she argued similar tactics were at play. Under Secretary Kemp, more people have lost the right to vote in the state of Georgia. They've been purged, they've been suppressed, and they've been scared. Voter suppression isn't only about blocking the vote. It's also about creating an atmosphere of fear. No one's being denied the right to the vote. The reason they're having these problems is because her canvassers didn't fill the form out correctly. And despite losing the governorship to Kemp by a margin of just over 1%, a lawsuit filed by Abrams now challenges how elections are conducted in Georgia. Five months later, do you still feel like your opponent won through voter suppression? Yes. The idea that minority voters can lose their vote or even face years in prison if those in power want to punish them is precisely what's at stake in the ongoing debate around voter suppression. And heading into the 2020 election, the stakes are higher than ever.